you said if Draymond played in the 90s, would he be a top 10 defender in that decade? And if yes, where would he rank? Hmm. Would Draymond be a top 10 defender in the 90s? So if you think about just guys on the perimeter alone, so Jordan, Scottie Pippen, uh, Joe Dumars, uh, Alvin Robinson. Mm. Um, in the 90s? Yes. Was Alvin really a 90s player, though? Well, he no. was both. He was Alvin, Alvin Robinson was on the other side of it, but he was still he was still an all he was I think he was still an all league defender and he's still an elite defender during that time. Gary Payton, Jason Kidd, SVP. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, who else? Yes, he yes, would. Yes, yes, he, he would, would be would, a top ten defender. No doubt about it. These are just these are these are just these are just these are just perimeter guys. I didn't bring up the other guys like Olajuwon. I didn't bring up the other guys like Draymond is a perimeter guy. Well, Draymond, is Draymond a perimeter guy? Yes. He would be. He, he, he would be back then. Well, he he can just do both. I don't know if he can do both. We, 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 we're not, we, we, we can we're relax not saying, on him doing both. We can relax he, on that. This is defensive versatility that makes him great. It's not the fact right. that he can lock down just the center spot. Mm -hmm. Right, we're not. Nobody's gonna ask him to guard Akeem Olajuwon for the whole game. His his, right. his value is in how he can guard all over the floor, similar to Scottie Pippen, guarding sure. multiple positions, mm -hmm. guarding different ways, being able Fair. to defend out of the pick and roll, being mm -hmm. able to switch to different positions without compromising the entire defense. His value will be found in that. So anybody right. that's comparing him to Hakeem, can he stop Hakeem? Well, nobody in the '90s stopped Hakeem. Nobody right. stopped Ewing. Nobody mm -hmm. stopped any of the great great bigs individually. Right. Right. For the most part. I mean, obviously, you could pick apart games where they play bad. But for the most part, the bigs are going to do their thing against any good defensive big. At the end of the day, nobody's going to ask him. It's a, how can he impact the mm -hmm. game overall? He's shown that his style of defense, it could easily translate into the 90s. Is there, um, is there any is there any great wings of the 90s that Draymond can shut down? I, I just want to say facts, FYF. You are up here cooking, it, cooking his, early and I he, see why Draymond's right. value. Oh Draymond God. value. No Draymond value is never in, uh, in individually stopping one player. You, right. you, there's even in today's game, nobody's gonna look at Draymond and say, "Oh, he shut down KD today." So mm -hmm. when the people dumb Draymond Green's defense down to, did he stop KD or did he stop this player? It's never about that. It's about how he impacts the overall team defense, right? Getting mm -hmm. certain stops in certain aspects of the game, slowing teams up, blowing up the offense. Throwing off their rhythm, um, that that's his value. So whenever somebody just dumbs it down to just getting one stop here or holding some player under twenty five there, that that's not truly what defense is. Because today's great players are getting too many opportunities to score for you to stop sure. them from getting their points. Sure. Uh, uh, hence, hence the term. Hence the term. Hey, 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 I, I hear it's a lot of talking going on when I when Daddy ain't in here. I hear it's a lot of talking going on when Daddy ain't in here. What's going on? How y'all gonna have a bar? You and I ain't invited, Ron. Hey, you ticket. actually late, Ticket. Let's be clear, Let's I be clear whole, about I that. I need a whole lot of Draymond Green capping in here. Nah, uh -huh. cap. How's it, Cap? Oh, you. Oh, you want to get right to it then? Huh? Well, let's go then. You want to walk into the fight? So, you don't want to walk into the fight? Well, look, I, I, think right I create here. the fire. Hold on. Let, let, let's get right to this, right? First of all. All this, all this great mind dream talk. What, what's going on right now? What happened this year? Why, this year's not over with. with. What happened this year? Hold on, we 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 seventy percent through the season, and he's been a walking cesspool. So what happened this season? What what happened last season in the NBA in the NBA finals when the coach had to bench his ass just so they could play better as a team? You talking about what one game? Year, what happened the year before that when they got Ooh. their ass smoked? When he's supposed to be an all star, he went on all the smoke. And he told and he told Matt Barnes and he told Stephen Jackson, oh well, see, because when Curry and them hurt, I, I ain't really gonna try and go hard. What you mean? I'm supposed to be a Hall of Famer. Hall of Fame game travel. Am I right, Chill Town? You a Hall of Famer. Your game's supposed to travel everywhere you go. It ain't supposed to be predicated off the greatest shooters that ever played a game of basketball. Let's not do this with me. Like I said, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson made this dude. Period. That's all there is to it. Because if that's, not the case, if that's not the case, if that's not the case, why he said he was the best defensive player in the world before the NBA Finals game one against the Toronto Raptors, and then Pascal Siakam proceeded to dust his ass up in that series, the entire series, put 31 on his helmet, or 32 game one off the rip, had that dude out there looking like a Kim Olajuwon in the post, barbecue chicken.
Yeah, Draymond Good, he here, a little bit of there, a little bit of mix, a little bit of max. You ain't finna put him on nobody from the whole game. You ain't finna put him on one of them big dudes from the whole series. He gonna foul out. He gonna do that stupid stuff he always do and keep his ass out of the game and out of the way. Let's just keep it real. He's a very good role player for the Golden State Warriors. If you put him on any other team, he's out of the league in five years. If you think I'm lying, ask Bob. He'll tell you. Me and Bob go at it every day about something. He'll tell you. See, all this overhyping of these players and stuff like that, but it's the same dude, Lamont, that came and told Elder that he can make a case. Scottie Pippen was better than Hakeem Olajuwon. Now, what type of drugs is that? Take him up. Take him up. Take him up. Take him up. Hey Lamont, hey listen Lamont, you, when, hey, Lamont <laughs> when me and you, when me and you go at it, Lamont, worlds collide, baby. Oh, Believe that. Oh, 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 hold on, ticket, hold on, ticket. Say what you just said one more time. Did you just say? Did you just say he can make a case that Scotty Pippen is better he than? Said who? He can make a case that from what Elder was saying that Scotty Pippen was better than Hakeem Olajuwon. He tried to make it seem like for that whole. Listen, we all understand that Scotty Pippen and Bob don't like Scotty Pippen slander but we all understand that look scotty pippen jordan needed pippen to win championships right but we're not gonna sit yes. up here and act like scotty pippen was on mic level man we're not finna do that we're not finna act like if scotty didn't come in the league playing with mike playing with oak and them dudes that made him tougher that made him the type of player he was that he wouldn't turn out to play the game. and then even when mike left i called him on in a lot when he talked to elder he was talking about one year well, what happened the second year Yo, FYF. If, did, if Scotty Pippen was so great, if he was so great, why the hell the Bulls was getting the hell beat out of him? The man went on national TV, pointed to his Jordans that he had on, and begged Mike to come back. Just pay that ass. If he was so that's, great, that's a relevant if, he was so great, if he was so great, why the year after he left Chicago, you know, the last year that he was in Chicago, they won the chip, but he wasn't an all-star, right? That same year when Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman was kicking everybody's ass in the building because he was hurt and didn't want to play, right? Didn't nobody tell him to sign that bad contract. He did. But they want to wear capes for this dude. No, we're not finna do that. Yo, we finna F cook extra hot. We F finna F cook extra hot. Like, mm -hmm. Even the GM folks <laughs> don't take that deal. Man still signed hey. the paperwork. Hey. So how y'all gonna get mad? How y'all gonna get mad at a dude? I heard Lamont saying this stuff. How you gonna get mad at a dude that signed well, the that, that they told him the contract it. was bad? Told him the contract was bad and he still signed it. That sounds like a slave deal to me. That sounds like a slave deal to me. And then hold on. With this this the other half right here, Hill Town. This one I really finna barbecue him. When he did get his money, and remember, he made more money in basketball than Mike did. Let's keep it a hundred. When he did get his money with Houston, what happened? Good. He went over there. He's supposed to be the man. He the one got six world championships. Hakeem on the downslide. Barkley on the down. He's supposed to go take over. He, he went over there and played like a walking trash can, just like Draymond <laughs> Green does on a nightly basis. Right? Oh when Draymond God. Green plays a good game, hey, Mars, you can put your head down, but I'm going to tell you something. Don't sleep in this class, sucker. Get your pen, get your pencil, <laughs> get your paper, and take notes, clown, because this is how big dogs operate. Chilltown know what's up. He know I ain't lying. When they paid Scott all that money, right? I don't want to hear about he was old. They paid him. How much money they paid him over there in Houston, uh, Chill Town? Four, year, four years, sixty million. Four years, sixty right. million. Oh he, got a baby, he, right? deserved, he deserved every damn dollar. This is horrible. No, 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 no. But I'm asking. Hold on. He deserved every but damn dollar. But what happened? Hold on. But what happened when he got over there? Horrible. FYF. I'm just listening. That's all I'm doing. And I'm. No, 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 no. Keep going. Keep going. The money. What happened when he got over there though? No, no. This is all the stuff that 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 my brother over here. FYF. And I'm gonna tell y'all something. It's always I can, I can been dress it all. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You got it. Okay. We, hold on. I'm gonna address everything he said one by one. We can start with the most recent thing he said, talking about Scottie Pippen's money. It wasn't just Scottie Pippen. If you remember around that time, 98, 99, 2000, that's when all the stars who were stars throughout the 90s finally got paid. Carl Malone, the most he ever made going up to 1999 was six million a year. Then yes, all of a sudden, dollars. all of a sudden, after 1999, he goes from 14 million on up towards the mm -hmm. end of his career when he wasn't even when he wasn't even in his prime anymore. So the money changed around that time because the CBA changed. So all the players who were great throughout the 90s, most of them capitalized around that time. So I, everybody know he was grossly underpaid for his whole career. All of them, Hakeem Olajuwon, all the stars in the 90s were and they all capitalized when they could. So we move on from that. So I don't I don't. I don't blame Scotty for getting his money, even though he was banged up and injured. Secondly, when I talked to Elder, remember y'all, 
Elder came up with this new dysfunctional top 10 list. That's because of me, because I called out this ridiculous logic that he had talking about winning. And I said, if you're going to just use winning as this all purpose formula to to determine what players are the best of all time, then there's absolutely no way you leave Scottie Pippen out of that formula. When you look at the top 10 players of the 90s, Scottie Pippen was top 10 of the 90s. So was Hakeem Olajuwon. If you prioritize winning, that puts Pippen over Hakeem. If you go off Elder's logic, he saw his logic was flawed and we saw he kicked Hakeem Olajuwon out of his top 10. Right. He revamped it. But it's even worse than before because he still has a whole bunch of holes that he's going to have to go back and revise and address. When you look at Scottie Pippen, you can slander him all you want. He was still one of the top 10 players of that era. Jordan don't win nothing without him. It's time for us to start giving him his just due. And we discredit these 90s fans. 90s fans swear up and down. They talk about defense, defense. They pride and applaud defenders. But y'all trash all of the best defenders because they weren't great scorers. And that carries on in this era, just like Draymond Green. Every player that you can think of in this era of basketball that plays similar to a 90s player, y'all trash. Y'all trash the Patrick Beverly, the hard nosed guys that actually go out there, defend, ain't chucking up a ton of threes, actually playing this hard nosed so called style that y'all see in the 90s. Y'all trash their game. Y'all trash the Draymonds. Remember, in this weird logic, first of all, it's about staying loyal to your team, staying on one team, doing it the right way with one team. But yet you criticize Draymond Green because he hasn't jumped from team to team to team just to prove to you. Just to prove to you, he can do it on different teams. So he's shown you that he can be loyal and he's done it on one team. And it's not me that says he was great, right? It's not me that says he was great. It's some of the greatest coaches in NBA history that said Draymond Green was great. Mark Jackson gave him the stat seal of approval. Tom Izzo gave him the seal of approval. Steve Kerr, Greg Popovich. So it ain't just me. All these other coaches putting them in starting roles, putting them on Olympic teams. He's a starting team for a, a – he's a starter on an on a NBA champion team that's been champions four times – but yet you just still find ways to say he's just a, a great role player. And I give him that. He is a great role player in that role, but he's done more than what a lot of people did in that role. You said Eric Pascal could replace him. Where's Eric Pascal at? He's at home somewhere in the G League probably. He's not even he's not even in the NBA relevant anymore. So it's not just any player can come in and do what Draymond does. I've yet to see anybody do what he does. <laughs>